Hello folks, Jonathan Milam here with uh, several Olds Horns. I actually uh, went on a binge a few years ago and um, I'd had uh, several specials just seemed to run across them. Uh, at that time I got an Ambassador, which was a fantastic playing horn, I think from 54, if I remember correctly. I got a uh, Mendez from the mid-60s. And uh, then I also had a nice uh, special and a good super. I think I've got a better super now. Different. They're all different. But uh, anyway, going to start off, I've got six olds here. All of them are from the L.A. factory, except for this one. And if you can see this special, note it's got the uh, sterling, uh, excuse me, nickel silver bell with the bronze tip. Then you know that's not L.A. because they didn't start making them until about 58, I believe. Horn gets a lot of discs. I think for the money, these are excellent horns. Very thick nickel silver bell would probably be a barn burner, but it's mellowed a little bit by the copper tip, which if you can see starts right about there. Uh, I think it's an excellent horn. Don't think Olds made a bad product. Uh, and this really, for the money, is a horn that's hard to beat. Okay, i um, just gonna play a chorus uh, that I heard in church one time and can't find anybody else singing it. Long tones, and uh, so it's it's a good way to highlight the uh, olds, you know. Um, I just don't go in for the type jazz where you do all those long runs. I do like bebop, that's my natural style, but uh, anyway, uh, for listening to a horn, yeah, the valves work real well, we'll try and give you some tone. Very simple melody, but like I say, we'll give you, you know, a lot of tone so you can check that out. Okay, the next one I've got is an interesting horn. I wanted one of these for a long time. It's the standard. The standard. And um, I don't understand exactly how Olds did things. I really thought the standard was about the same thing as the Olds. But I see that they did make them uh, contemporaneous, <laughs> contemporaneously uh, at the same time. Um, I thought the they quit calling it the Olds and began calling it the Standard. But like I say, if you look at the Olds register, you can see that they did make them some. Very simple horn. This one has very little to distinguish it other than excellence in tone, uh, but uh, no bracing on the, or no uh, third slide stop, no A tuning slide, which a lot of the older ones do have. Just an excellent playing horn. Honestly, a simple horn with a simply beautiful tone. Old standard, and I wanted to say it is from about 48. I think I forgot to mention I'm using a GRM mouthpiece. And what I'm doing, I'm running for my selection um, the uh, more affordable on up to probably the more expensive. And I've got a little debate here. I'm not sure which of these uh, is the more expensive. They were about the same price for me. This is the Olds. Just the Olds. And um, my dad played trombone, was a good trombonist, an excellent violinist, but a good trombonist as well. And um, I remember asking him one time, uh, uh, what trombone was that? And he went, huh, it was the Olds. <laughs> That's all he needed to say. Great horn. This is the Olds, uh, actually the oldest horn that I have right now from 39. Ah. 
Okay, and I've got a super that, um, it's the only super I've had, I think the fifth that I've had, but the only one that actually has the um, thumb pull. And, uh, you know, I don't use it very often, but it's nice to have. I do like that. This super is from, uh, I think, 41 as well. Right, 41. Okay, I mentioned in a previous recording, I made one uh, about an old super recording a few minutes ago, and I mentioned in that the recording, the super, and the super recording, all, to my way of thinking, they share some elements that do make them uh, rather similar. The three go together very well. This is a good playing Olds recording from, uh, oh, of course, you know, the offset valves and the, uh, uh, the offset second valve and the forward valve set balanced feel is uh, on perhaps the third slide trigger is what makes the uh, recording a very, very popular instrument. To my way of thinking, that is a round sound, um, an aggressive sound, but not brash, but just a very, very present, full sound. Where the super sometimes to me sounds fat, the recording just is just a uh, mm, powerful sound. And uh, of course, this is a great, great mouthpiece. I think it. Uh, does well to highlight that tone. Okay, lastly, we have a great super recording here. Oh, I meant to say the um, hmm, that recording is the oldest of the quality horns that I've got from 52, and this super recording, not the oldest, but uh, like the super, comes from 41. Uh, older model, of course, got the, um, I don't know what they call this, the single tube pipe. Uh, most um, of the olds have a long receiver, and then the lead pipe starts up, but here you've got just a tiny ribbon of brass, and then you've got the nickel-silver long, long lead tube. Okay, just to finish up, there's a, a thumbs up somewhere down there 
probably under my name somewhere. And um, there's going to be a link to this vid also, probably the first sentence of my comments will take you to a link if I've got mouthpieces, ca uh, uh, cases, uh, trumpets, cornets, uh, trumpet paraphernalia. If I've got it for sale, it'll be at trumpetherald.com, one of my favorite places on the web. I'm there multiple times a day, it seems like. And uh, that's where I put a list of things that I do have for sale if I do. Okay, as always, it's a pleasure. Love the comments, folks. If you've got experience with uh, these old horns, you know, what you liked about yours, uh, what you still like about it. As always, thanks for your time, and uh, do take care of yourself and someone near you.